Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Train Course on Printer Types. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the CompTIA requirements from Section 1.11 of our Essentials Exam 22701, where we need to install and configure printers. And there's many different printer types we need to know about. We need to know about laser printers, inkjet printers, thermal printers, and impact printers. Let's start first with one of the most common printers you'll find in most business environments, which is the laser printer. And this is a laser beam. We're using lasers, high voltages, charged ions, powdered ink, heat, and at last paper inside of these things. This is a large, very technologically advanced mechanical device that's able to give us the output that we need. It gives us some very, very high quality, both black and white and color type in, of output. Really, really crisp and clear, which is probably why it is so popular in these business environments. It also prints very fast. Some of these laser printers are incredibly quick at how they can operate. And the, they're getting faster and faster all the time and improving on the types of colors and techniques that it can use. Unfortunately, these are very complex devices. They have a lot of moving parts. You have a lot of technology inside of it. They're a computer into itself that has a CPU and memory and everything else. And we're using powdered toner. It gets very messy if that powdered toner gets out. So on the inside of the printer, you always have to keep it clean. You always have to be sure it's maintained or else it can get out of hand very quickly. The process of actually creating the picture on the piece of paper and printing it out on a laser printer is very interesting. It's a little different than looking at something like a traditional laser printer or line printer where you can actually see the characters being stamped on the page. We don't have any stamping taking place in the laser printer. What we're doing is sending a, a representation of what the page should look like to the laser printer, and it builds the page out in memory. It builds an entire page of what it should be printing before it ever starts the printing process. So when you finally hear the laser printer starting up and pulling in the paper and printing, it already knows what it's about to print. It's already done the calculations. What it really is doing is taking a, spe a very special language into the printer to be able to calculate and see what this page is really represented like. It's using something called a raster image processing. And you'll see different kinds of languages being used, which means if a printer only understands one particular kind of laser printer language, we have to make sure we send that language to the printer. So you'll see languages like Adobe PostScript, which was one of the very first laser printing languages that was out there. These days, you'll also see one that HP made popular called the HP Printer Command Language. You'll usually see it abbreviated as PCL. Microsoft also created a specification called the Microsoft XML page specification. You'll see that sometimes abbreviated as XPS. So you want to make sure the printer driver that you're using is able to communicate properly to the printer that you're using. Most of the time, your printer driver and the printer, you're using the same name for the driver. If it's a LaserJet 4500, you're using a printer driver that says LaserJet 4500. And then you can be pretty comfortable they're going to match. But sometimes it'll say LaserJet 4500 PostScript or 4500 PCL. And you have to check your laser printer and make sure that it can either do one of those kinds or both. If you were to look at this language and the type of information going back and forth from your your driver, your printer driver, that's being sent to the printer to make that page, it's not the picture of the flower that you were sending or the text that's in that memorandum. You're seeing things like this go back and forth. It is text, but it's all this very specialized language of text that's going back and forth to the printer. So don't think that you can just type in the word hello and send it over to the printer. Generally, there's a lot more that has to happen behind the scenes for that printer to properly create a page that has the word hello that finally prints out that document. The mechanical process for laser printer is also pretty intriguing. Once it finally understands what it's going to print, there is this big process that has to take place to get that page into the printer, get that representation of the page written onto this photosensitive drum, and finally get it to come out on the other side. 
I've started this circle here in the first process that you can call clean. Now, if you look at other documents associated with the laser printing process, they might start with a process that's somewhere else in this circle. But it all circles back and forth around and around again. There is no beginning or end per se. But I just started with this one because what happens before we're able to put information onto this photosensitive drum, we have to clean it off. If there's any, uh, any of the toner particles that were left over or any part of the photosensitive drum that has any type of specs on it, we need to remove that right away and make sure that that drum that's circling around well, that has this information on it is completely clean. Then we need to charge the drum. We need to put it in a place where it's completely cleared off. All the ions are now set so that we're ready to write to them with the laser. We're essentially erasing the page and making sure it's perfectly clean to start with. And that's because this third process is where we use the laser beam. We're actually going to take a laser and we're going to write an image in laser directly onto this photosensitive drum. What we're really doing is ionizing the drum, but only in certain spots. We're going to make sure that it has a different electrical charge than other parts of the drum. This electrical charge is now going to allow certain parts of the toner that's inside of this device to stick to certain parts of that photosensitive drum. So we've drawn a picture, and now we've kind of thrown some toner at it. And that toner is only going to stick to the places we want it to stick. That's the beauty of that laser, being able to ionize those pieces of it. We call that process the developing process, where we're now sticking that toner that we have inside of our toner cartridge directly onto the photosensitive drum, and it's sticking there. And what's going to happen is that drum continues to rotate around. Our paper is down here at the bottom, and the paper is now collecting all of those sticky pieces of toner that we have there. And so it's transferring what is on the photosensitive drum now directly to the paper. Almost like a printing press might do with ink, we're doing it with toner. And that paper now has got all of those very, uh, very small toner particles now stuck to it. And what we want to do is now really make sure those toner particles now melt and stick to the paper. Because if you've ever opened up a toner cartridge before, you know that toner goes everywhere. But when you get a printout out of your printer, the toner is not sticky at all. It doesn't really slide around too much. It needs to dry a little bit. What we're really doing here is fusing it together with both pressure and heat to make sure that it's going to stick to that paper permanently once it all dries off, once it comes out the other side. And that now has a little bit, once it transfers and fuses that, you notice there's a little bit of toner that sometimes is still stuck to the photosensitive drum, which means when we try to start another printout, we're going to have to clean it. And now the process starts all over again from the very beginning.